Hey folks, it's time for the Twip Pro Photo Critique number 120. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is critique number 120. Troy Miller, you believe it's been 120 episodes that we've been doing this thing? Oh, <laughs> no, I was just going to say that. Yeah, 120. That's wow. That's, that's crazy. Lot. We're old. We're I think we're old now. <laughs> yeah, so two years worth, right? Two and a half years. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So you were uh, we were talking the other day. Nicole and I were talking about the phases and I was like, you know, you start with the enthusiastic newbie. Then you go on. You go on to the. Uh, you know, seasoned professional, then you go on to veteran, and then you go on from veteran to uh, original gangster, and then from original gangster or OG, you go to veteran, or not veteran, uh, to legend. <laughs> the <end. laughs> That's the ascension. So we're somewhere in there <laughs> with, this, with these critiques. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna put us put us as seasoned professional, probably. We're seasoned yeah, we have professional. More than Ten thousand hours for sure. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. Um, so this week's critique topic was spoon or spoons. Yes. Um, we got some. We got some good submissions, right? We got a, a ton of good ones. In fact, we had a little bit of trouble trying to pick our favorite before we started recording. So we did. We, uh, yeah, it's a. What's a, what's let's foreshadow the next week's show. What uh, what's our topic going to be? Ooh, so yeah, so I was thinking we do a lot of like point your camera at and capture this thing. So I thought, well, what if we did like a composite, you know, multi images in your final image? So composite or multi exposure, whether you want to do it in Photoshop or you want to do it in camera, something composite ish, right? Yes. Yeah, a combination of more than one photo somehow right. or more right. than one image. Does it have to be a photo? <laughs> Because couldn't you know? Because remember, Joshua does it. Joshua can generate synthetic people and put them, <laughs> composite them with real people if you wanted to. So that'd be interesting. Uh -huh. No, no, any any like anything that fits inside of a digital framework that has pixels that we can look at. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Just no. We're getting away. At least for this next one, we're going to get away from your standard. Here's a photo that I post processed, made it look awesome, put a Troy Miller border on it, and published it. And instead, <laughs> instead, we are going to take multiple images and create something greater than the sum of its, or yeah, greater than the individuals. You know. So. Right. All right. right. Cool. Would say. Uh, Would say we dive into this week's critique. We do, yes. Let's do that. We have some really good ones to go through. Yes, we do. We got one or two in here. So let's take a look. I am sharing my screen now, and we are in Twit Pro. First one is from this guy. I think we, I think we have our favorite, Troy, right off the bat. <laughs> at least, at least it'll be a split vote. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you know, I had to throw one in there that had fire. So yeah. you know, there's a spoon in the shot. Um, I actually did this uh, image for Tim Ingle. I think we did it for Tim Ingle's Hangout. And so I just sort of grabbed it and threw it in there. So I like it. That's really cool. That's cool. Well, how, well, just before we move on real quick, how'd you do it? What's the, what's the behind the scenes? It's a larger ladle. So it's a larger like serving spoon and it's just full of lighter fluid. And then That's it. it's... Yeah, it's just lighter fluid, and then it's lit with two gels on two different lights. So I got a blue gel on the left, and they're loom cubes. So that's all it is. I like it. That was really Sim cool. Simple. Fire! Yep. Light Take a bunch of pictures, and <laughs> yeah, it made everything hot and sooty. Yeah, I, know, I like it. I at first thought I didn't even think that that was on fire. I was thinking that that's like some sort of fire source shooting at the fork and the spoon from uh, the from the lower uh, right. No, uh, fire from the lighter fluid burns orange, so it's always a neat, it's always a neat red orange color. So that's why I added the purple to go in there. Yeah. All right. Fun Very stuff. Cool. Good shot, man. Thank you. Yeah. Anytime I get a chance to light something on fire, I'm happy. I know. I can't pass it up, Pyro. All right. Next shot is from Jim Peters. Jim yeah. says a bit late 
uh, for full execution. At least now I have the idea for next spoon challenge. The series includes uh, multiple sets of spoons in motion. That is much more interesting. But the snow angel will be today's submission. Oh, okay, now he says snow angel. I get it. I I, I get why the uh, come on load mighty. There you go. Yeah, I get I get why these are missing on that first arm. That's cool. Yeah, it's very creative. I, I was really surprised with the community what they came up with spoons. I thought I le- I legitimately thought, and I and I apologize. I legitimately thought that uh, we wouldn't have a lot of spoon submissions, but we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we got a ton of creative ones too. Not just like okay, here's a spoon. Someone sipping a, you know, some soup off of a spoon. We got actual real art in here. This is really cool. Have any food on our spoons? So. Um, this particular one, I really like the fact that we have this neat symmetrical propeller shape or angel shape, you know, uh, with the motion. I think the challenge for me is the background, the, the, the texture, the moraying effect of that background is very distracting. So I just wish this, the spoons were on a simpler pattern. Like maybe toned down a bit. Like the background yeah. itself, like bring the highlights of this the tablecloth down just a bit, so there, it's a little a little more muted, or with it's is the pattern itself the thing that's getting you? I think it's the pattern. The pattern itself is is really detracting from the overall image itself. You know, I think yeah. the background should have been just a lot simpler, and and maybe you could do that with some, uh, like a blur layer, and just kind of bring it down a bit and get rid of the the contrasty things because that's really what's distracting. But the overall execution is really cool, and I like it. It's very, very abstract. Again, this is one of those images I think would fit in a series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a triptych. With this a being tri- the last the last of the triptych, the other two have a successive growing number of spoons. So you start with one, right. and then two, and then this is three. That would be cool. Right. Right. Yeah, think, exactly. Got to love this art stuff. It's very cool. It's very inspiring. A lot of creativity. Next up is Jack Hubs. Jack says, there is no spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, there is no spoon. Uh-huh. I dig it. I dig it. Very, very cool. I do wish that the lighting had been a little bit more dramatic. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it seems like a very flat lighting to me, and I, I love the execution with the glass and... Um, you know, the absence of the spoon, which I, I, I got that right away. I love that. So I just wish that the overall lighting was a little bit more dramatic. Yeah, it's an interesting this color palette is interesting. I don't, I don't you don't you don't, you know, see this particular color palette often. At least I don't, you know, with sort of the the greenish yellowish wood in the back. Um, everything kind of has like a, a greenish cyan tint over it. Right. And which which plays off of that green plate. And then, you know, this sort of reddish napkin and wine. It's this is a this is a really interesting color palette to me. Yeah. And one of the things, too, is when you're shooting an image like this, like there's no depth. And so we have to think about how do we create depth in an image and, um, you know, shooting from maybe a slightly lower angle. Um, shooting into the glass is the background that the front of the gla- the plate is the foreground. And then, you know, the utensils in the middle are the middle ground was what's in focus. But right now everything's kind of flat. And if we're going to shoot flat like this, the top of the glass should be in focus. Yeah, right? that's true. It's going to be yeah. over the, the food or over the top of the table kind of shot. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Perfect. Thank you, Jack Hubs. Very cool. Yes. It's always good when people talk about your work, right? Because they get sort of sucked into it. And even if it's critical, they're giving you tips. You know, it's all, it's all, all, most information is good information. Not all, but most. Right. <laughs> all right. Some Yahoo posted this yesterday. <laughs> this next shot by Tim Engel. All right, Tim, no comments on, or no caption. Let's take a look. Nice. Yeah, this is Tim Engel. I don't know if I want to eat with that spoon, though, right? There's holes in that spoon. Yeah. Are there holes in the spoon? How is that? <laughs> that's a ladle. On there? A spoon. That is weird. That is, that's really interesting. But it's an interesting pattern, yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe that's a that's a weight loss spoon, Troy. A weight <laughs> loss spoon, yeah. <laughs> you can only bring the spoon to your face a total of a hundred times a day. <laughs> right, right. And liquids that's only. <laughs> The shadows are really cool. This is really a shot of a fork more than anything else, right? Like, like yeah. this is very subtle. Um, Spoon but is I a do, supporting character. I do love the shadows, and I, I do love the 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 harshness of the lighting. I do wish that it was cropped so that it was centered, though. I don't understand why you would have an image off balance like that. Like, there's no reason for that negative space on the right. It's almost like Tim was indecisive. He was like, <laughs> you know... I want that fork. I really know that if I want the fork to be dominant, it needs to be closer to the camera and the spoon needs to be slightly out of focus backwards, in which case you could center the fork. Otherwise, uh, I'd have to put it, you know, I have to crop that edge off or get the spoon out of there. So this is indecisive Tim Engel. <laughs> Tim Engel. <laughs> or, <clears throat> or this is really going to annoy Troy. Let's just put it in this way. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, you put in an amputated model. That's, what, that's how you get you with that. Why did you chop her elbow off? Yeah, yeah. But definitely, you know, <clears throat> take the top off. There's not a lot going on there. And then just balance the left and right. I mean, it's nice and tight on the left, which I think is fine. Mm -hmm. And just, just make right. it equally tight. Make it make it this yeah. this distance here on this side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and, it'll and maybe be, it'll lose be... some of that. Yeah. So you're just cropping like that. Yep, yep. It'll work really well. Very cool. I dig it. Right. We dig it, Tim Engel. Next up is Nora Zanotnis. Nora says... <clears throat> she shot this with her Nikon D7500 at a quarter of a second, F5.6 at 105 millimeter, ISO 800. Is this D7500? Is that full frame? Uh, D75. I don't know. I think so. Heck, I don't know. I don't Bless keep track. Her. How, can, how can you not know the entire <laughs> Nikon product line? Don't you sign up to be familiar with their whole line when you buy one of their cameras? <laughs> I don't think the I don't think the seven thousand series, like the seven thousand, seventy one hundred, seventy five hundred, were full frame. I think that seven, the D seven fifty and eight hundred were the full frame. I'm guessing. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I don't know. This I, is a cool shot. I love this shallow. This is extreme shallow depth of field that you would only really kind of the only hints of it are yeah the foreground and the background and the extreme fall off but that crisp line of in focus area on the shadow underneath the spoons that is that's it right, right? I, I love that's your the clue of how de what the what the depth of field is set at right there and that she's you know at what did she say when did she say she shot this at 5.6 was it five six? Yeah, five yeah. five six. Definitely yeah, shallow. Yeah, it's definitely shallow. Um, I love the abstract nature of the the shape and the form of the spoons together. I just wish that the facing edges were sharp instead of just that little bit, uh, you know, on off to you the mean right. These edges here. Yeah, okay. I, I wish the whole front edge facing of the spoon handle doesn't have to be the ladle part because I know that that comes forward. But I wish that the at least the handles were oh, sharp. Yeah. So like from right here, basically. Yeah. Yeah, something like that because I feel like like the 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 subject matter is not sharp. There is a portion of it that's sharp, and I the, I don't feel like the subject matter is sharp, which is basically that handle leading in from the left. And I just wish that was sharp and then faded out of focus or, you know, less sharpness into the ladle part on the right. That, mm -hmm. I think that would be a much stronger image, um, which you'd probably have to focus stack if she's shooting at a quarter of a second at 5.6 at 800 yeah. ISO. I mean, it's it wasn't super bright. So you either got to do like a 10 minute exposure, you know, and up that that aperture. Mm -hmm. But I love the <clears> abstract. Yeah. And it's it's very very nice, yeah, yeah. It is. What what do, what do you think about the color? I I like it in color. I would probably take it to black and white because it's it's more about the shapes. Mm -hmm. But I think the color does lend to the story because I feel like it's sitting on a wooden table, and that that kind of gives me the perception of you know maybe this is in somebody's home and it and it has that sort of warm feeling where if you made it black and white it would be just much more sterile and abstract so kind of yeah. depends what you want to communicate 
and where it's going to be hung. Yeah, because I could see this easily, you know, being part of a set again, hanging on the walls, you know, like a, a Nora Zanotnis gallery installation in a local coffee shop or something. Right. Yeah. And and you want this sort of warm, earthy tones in there, kind of coffee-ish tones. So, yeah, it depends. But conversely, if, you know, hang, yeah, I guess it probably would still work, but hanging in, you know, some New York City bachelors, all white, you know, brushed in aluminum, sterile apartment, American cycle style, right? <laughs> so you, have, you right. have an apartment like that, then you'd probably want the black and white, you know, just because it's crisp and it's not dominating a, an otherwise monochromatic scene. Absolutely. And, you know, an image like this, if I, if I was going to submit this to an art dealer or a gallery, I would submit to one black and white and one color because it's really going to come down to what, how is it going to fit in the theme? So mm -hmm. if this hang in somebody's kitchen and they had a lot of earth tones in there, they're not going to want the black and white probably, or maybe not. Maybe they want the color, right? So this is one of those images that definitely can go both directions based on, on how the end user wants it. So you got to be, yeah. got to be willing and this to. Is, this is one of those shots that she could, she could, um, use an app like uh, Capture One to target just those browns in the image and change them to whatever color is necessary for that particular environment, right? Yeah. But it is, is Capture One, it's that detailed, right? It could handle grabbing those shades of color in that soft focus area, right? Oh yeah, 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 you could definitely do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, only, cool. the only other knit is the highlights. I mean, it's, and we don't know is how much here? is left in Mighty. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, your highlights should always have some some form of detail in there unless it's pure specular highlight. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I wonder if there's data in there in the raw, if she shot this in raw. Yeah, Interesting. Cool. No way to know. For us to know. Mm-hmm. Can... Not at all. I like it, though. That is a cool shot. It's... All right. Next shot is Armando Brook. Mondo says, natural light, last minute of our winter sunny day. Hmm. What? Natural light, great. last minute. Look at that. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I love it. Mean, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of detail that Mighty is and, and YouTube are crushing out of this image. So th that highlight is blown, but not as blown um, as you're seeing it on the recording. Right. Yeah. And it, it is it is definitely overexposed. I don't know if that's on purpose, if that highlight has gone pure white or not, which I, I'm not entirely opposed to. Um, I do wish there was some subtle shadows in there, just a subtle texture, even if it's just scattered to make it feel like it's not this vacant void of space or paper mm -hmm. white printing. Um, but the distortion of the shadow is is really quite wonderful. I, I really I really love that. I'm debating whether or not we need all that space on the left it uh, i think it might be a little too much you know um, yeah if it was crop square then it your brain almost goes to what is that is that a is that a letter d is that a g clef what what am i looking at right and with the space in there you kind of have to think about that space uh conversely maybe like we always say he put a big chin on this framing so maybe that yeah. Maybe that space is, you know, the space left blank intentionally for some copy or something like that. Yeah. And I think that the horizontal works. I just think this is too horizontal. And then on the left hand side um, in the lower left corner, I can see where it looks like there's been some cloning work done. Um, and you can tell because the pixels are soft and. Mm -hmm. Just the, that's just such an inherent thing when you're working in Photoshop is that if you try to clone into pixels, you got to be careful to make sure that you clone. Well, in the lower left corner, especially if you look down there, there's some vertical striations that look soft there. Oh, yeah, right. Kind of right in there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just because like maybe you clone from a softer area where the pixels were softer um, or Photoshop tried to soften them and blend them together like through content aware and that's just mm -hmm. the nature of it you really got to make sure that that grain structure if you will stays and you could i think i think you could just literally crop that out and i don't think that you would lose anything in there yeah but i love the technique cool. and i like the creativity of that of that shadow and that bend 
And this I is wonder, probably. The, I, I love the yeah the, the whole thing. I I agree with your idea of maybe cropping it, unless this is this was left for some post process that we don't know about, like print or something. Um, I probably it's just you know my own aesthetic because I'm very kind of simple and you know, uh, utilitarian in the way I do things. So like these kinds of spoons, I would rather have seen like a really simple, um, you know, or, ornate free spoon there instead of oh, the design yeah. on the spoon. Yeah. Without all this stuff on there, I would love to have just a really clean sort of iconic spoon, you know, and then the, <laughs> the entering the interestingness plays into the image with the, why is that shadow curved like that? Right, right, right. Yeah, very interesting. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And not very different. From... So people can play with that. Okay, what does Steven say? He left us a note. He says, uh, a spoonful of honey. Note for judges. That's us. Are we judges? <laughs> we're not judges. We're not judges, Steven. We're critics. <laughs> it's a difference. Yeah, we're nitpickers. <laughs> critics, critics have no responsibility. Judges do. <laughs> Please view the expanded full image on the new Twip Pro website. It uh, it doesn't crush the the uh, tonal range, huh? Can we do that? Um, all right. So I'm going to for Stephen Sharf switch over to Twip Pro. Uh, there we go. So there's Stephen's image on the new Twip Pro site. So. Stephen, yeah. yes, Mighty Networks does crush stuff down a lot, uh, but so does, you know, YouTube servers and all that stuff. So <laughs> there's a really lot of stuff between your original and the final, the final version as viewed on the web. Um, but cool. What do you think? Is that technic? Is that that dipper technically a spoon? First of all, I don't think it's a technically a spoon, but it's a it's a creative take. On yes, it is a one. device made of metal that is used to scoop food substances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a drizzler. It's a honey a drizzler. drizzler. There you I go. There you go. Idea. That sounds um, like the name of a boat or something. <laughs> the drizzler. Oh, the honey know. drizzler. The honey <laughs> drizzler. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. All right. When we when we hit the lottery, man, uh, I'm buying you a boat. <laughs> It is going to be called the Honey Drizzler. It's going to be sitting in the bay. <laughs> oh, man. So, so many visual images uh, with that. Just stay wasn't, wasn't that Jeffrey Epstein's boat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should not talk bad about it. <laughs> Oh, oh. See what you do to us, Stephen Sharp. Is he? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God, Turning Stephen, your hand. image is sparking joy. <laughs> <laughs> it's sparking joy. All right, so um, okay, so this is a composite. I think first of all, not it, not not a composite composite. Like, well, it could be because we don't know if he put this this dripping honey device in there later but he could have or couldn't have but he however it got in there it is flawless because i don't see any tracks i don't think right. i uh, down the edge here i do see a little bit you see that down there yeah like there was a little cleanup of right around. yeah let me zoom in a little bit sorry steven yeah yeah there's definitely yeah, <clears throat> Yeah, or is that just the way the light the light is formed? Um, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I think it's it's Photoshop work just from the nature of it. I mean, basically the way that you would clean that up is that you would want to use a a brush and use a shift click, so click at one end and then a shift click at the other and make a perfectly straight line, mm -hmm. or the pathing tool or a selection tool to make a perfectly straight line with a little bit of feather, and then you erase on the inside of that to remove anything you want. So that that edge stays perfectly straight because our eyes just follow lines like crazy. And it's so easy to see that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I really like it. I think it's I think it's really clever. I think it's very creative. I like the interpretation of the spoon for sure. Um, yeah. 
again, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big anti advocate for uh, negative space that doesn't do anything. And I, I just, that space on the right to me, I understand that the jar is centered, but I think composited wise, uh, not composited compositionally, I don't think that negative space on the right is serving us. And I feel like, I feel like it's better to center the whole image with the jar slightly off to the right. And then the, the honey drizzler off to the left, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the SS honey. Drizzler. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah. I think, yeah, you could have solved that. I would have probably given it a little bit more bottom space too, but that's, that's just me. Yeah. Um, and- you know, for symmetry, maybe the same amount of body space at the bottom as you have from the ball and the honey drizzler to the top of the frame. So, you're just so saying honey e- drizzler now. You're going to say that. I just like saying it. <laughs> this episode's going to be called the honey drizzler episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, how's that going to rank in SEO? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I think that when you come up with subjects like this, that it's a really good idea to consider composition ahead of time. So, you know, maybe this would have been a really fun image to do where the drizzler is hung vertically. So this whole image is a tall vertical, right, Mm. with a bunch of space for copy and then the interpretation might be maybe you rotate it horizontally so it kind of defies gravity but compositionally everything is sort of in line right everything yeah. everything works um or if you can't do that then add some subject matter to the right to fill it in you know maybe it's in a kitchen and that's a window over on the right that 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 sort of this sitting on a table mm-hmm. so Thinking of how that's going to play when it's done uh, is is always a good thing to do ahead of time. Um, or, or uh, you know, get Joshua to render you a, a nice honeybee and put it down at the bottom right, <laughs> down there, <laughs> composite it in. So you have three elements in there. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But I, I dig it. Some I love it. Or some spilled honey on the ground there would be cool on the right. Yeah. That would have been. He doesn't want to waste his honey though. That looks like that's good honey. So yeah, that does look like good honey. <laughs> looks like really good honey. Like <laughs> let's not waste yeah. that. Cool shot though. I like it. Yeah. All right, Stephen Scharf. All right, Stephen. Thank you, Steve. All right, now we're back on Twit Pro. I'm going to close this guy, and we're on to the next one. Peter Levshin is in the, his house. Peter says, just having some fun. What the, what am I <laughs> looking at here? <laughs> what kind of madness is this, Peter? <laughs> Those look to me like, like they're spoons stuck in the sand. And, and it's, are, it's uh, infrared. Uh, well, it could have been infrared, but chances, yeah, it could be either one, but it, it, then it's been inverted. So now the mm. shadow lights and stuff. So yeah, you could do that in infrared. The you would get the same effect, and then you just invert it. Um, so I don't know if you shot it in infrared or not. But yeah, Peter, you'll have to let us know in the comments. Did you shoot this infrared? I'm gonna go on a limb and say yes. Yeah, it feels it, it has that infrared you know glow to it. That glow, yeah, that's what I'm I'm feeling. That glow. Uh, I could be wrong, but yeah, this is, this is kind of spooky, definitely abstract. And we don't see a whole lot of abstract stuff out of Peter Levshin normally. Occasionally <laughs> we do, but not like this. This is, this is right on the edge of, you know, museum of modern art sort of abstract. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested to know whether Peter pulled this out of his archives or went and shot it. Yeah. Because- yeah, he's not far. If from he the pulled beginning. it out of his, if he pulled this out of his archive, because Peter shoots a ton, yeah. uh, he's probably that means he's being pretty diligent with his keywording inside of <laughs> whatever <laughs> app. He doesn't keyword hardly anything, and he just remembers where all of it's at, which is crazy. Um, so on on an image like this, I think that I think composition within the frame matters a lot, and I feel like the composition within the frame is is off. You know, it's tight at the top left next to that spoon. The bottom is loose. The right is loose. The left is kind of loose. So uh, I think you just need basically more headroom. You know, maybe double what you have everywhere else to kind of set it in like a lower third or dead center. Like the shadows and the spoons need to be dead center in the frame and, and crop it. 
Yep. Cool though. Spooky. But other than that, Spooky, yeah, but cool. Creative. Yeah. How did you think of this on your own? See? The uh at some point the the, the child becomes the father. <laughs> 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 All right. We're going to close that down. Mark Harris is up next. Mark Harris says, for the spoon topic, I decided to try, uh, I decided to try to light a black spoon. Okay, it's a ladle, but close enough. Uh, like I light models for my body abstract photographs. I used an off-camera speed light in a snoot and the spoon on a black background with his D850 and his ICE 85 at 14, or uh, 8514 at F11 at ISO 1600 at 160th of a second. I, I love this shot. And I, and I actually think the stream, um, you know, what you're showing is recorded is actually closer to what I would hope to see. I think that the, the one that the I'm crust seeing blacks. Yeah. Yeah. The, the blacks need to go down, you know, almost to the shadow darkness and just barely get those highlights and the, what would that be the the stem or the the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. neck of the ladle i just i like that lighting style and i think it's so great that this is the same lighting style that he uses on his models mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it shows how you know you you can take one lighting style and use it in another genre almost entirely yep. you know that that light reflected light. light does the same thing it doesn't care what it's bouncing off it knows it does the same stuff every time yeah yeah that's why I like infrared light because it behaves differently than visual light. But it's, yeah, it's, yeah you got to light works on all subjects. So, um, do you, do I you ever get do you, do you ever get depressed that that humans have such a limited a limited range of uh, visible light spectrum acuity? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we compensate for our intellect and our ability to create tech to see other stuff. So, but imagine if we could see that other stuff. What we could be, we, we could build. You oh know? my god! We, right? So imagine if we just expanded out a little bit. What kind of products and, and advances would there be if we had that much more acuity? I was really hoping that Google goggles would 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 take off so that by now I could choose to see an infrared, you know, no, through the. You just want to be Jordy LaForge. <laughs> you know? I, that's that'd be so cool. I would just yeah. be so cool. Yeah, that would be that would be wonderful. But um, I love I love the sharp mark. Uh, I think this is great. I think that just a little dodging and burning and bringing that tone down would would really help this image a lot. I think it would be much more dramatic. So we, we don't need to see that background. We just need to focus on the highlights. Yep. I agree. Just do that. All right. All right. We're moving on to the next shot. You froze for just a second there. It wasn't too bad, though. No. Oh, I don't like it when I freeze. You froze. Uh, <laughs> next shot is James Glenny. Gentle curves and lines. Look at that. I love this. There's so many of these shots in here are really good. And I, and I really, really enjoy um, the subtle abstract of this. If, if, if James, if you had moved your camera slightly left and down, we might not have known it was a spoon, right? So there's just enough of the ladle part of the spoon to tell us like that's that, that this is a spoon. Yeah. Yeah. So just barely I, enough. Yeah. And it's iconic. Yeah. And, it, and it's interesting how little of a very well-known object our brains need to see in order to make a decision on what it is. Right? Yeah. Because this is very little of the spoon. You could probably crop in a little bit more and show us less. And our brains would automatically fill in the blanks that, oh, this is a spoon. Inverted. Yeah. It knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even inverted, right? Even inverted. It's, it, we pick it up pretty well. Um, yeah. yeah, lit really well. I like the subtle lighting. I like that back edge lighting that's coming in from, say, you know, camera left, 10, 10 11 o'clock, <clears throat> kind of lighting the edges. I think that's really nice. That's really good lighting. So that, that helps a lot yeah. with those shapes and forms. And it's sharp. Yeah. You know, it's it sharp is. work. It is. To be sh yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm just definitely ab absorbing the shot. And, and like that other shot, I think I agree with you. I like this one. I like the blacks crushed down a little bit more like they're coming through on the stream versus the actual shot. 
Um, the actual shot is good too because he's. It looks like he's intentionally showing just a hint of texture of wh where the spoon is laying, where that could be like dark wood or something. Um, but on the stream, it's crushing those dark colors to zero almost, and which results in an even more abstract shot because you're. It's now comprised of very very few mid tones between the extreme black and the blown highlight. So. Absolutely. It's and, and it works because that that sort of edge lit or backlit highlights along the ridges of the spoon and those are standing out creating the shape and form that we need. We don't need all that shadow detail. So it really kind of depends on your purpose. Um, but it goes more abstract. And I agree with you, Frederick. I like it darker where those mm -hmm. those are really sort of the hero. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it just comes becomes almost geometric at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought? Cool. I like that shot a lot. Uh, Craig Stanfley's up next. He says, Spoon, this topic scrambled my brain. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, let's take a look. I want to know why Spoon scrambled his brain. See now, now I would have thought that that uh, that Craig would have done the spoon making the black and tan, you know, for the beer. Right? Yeah. Right. That would have been a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, or an underwater this, spoon, right? Like he could have re recreated that whole Nirvana shot from their Nevermind uh, album with the baby in the pool, but <laughs> trying to get the dollar, but the dollar could be a, a spoon instead, a silver we, spoon. <laughs> Craig, you just ask us. We got plenty of ideas. We can't, yeah. edit them, but <laughs> I, I think it's cool. I think it's I think it's a neat shot. I think this is maybe an image to take black and white, um, get the color out of there and really just take us very mysterious, you know, um, without the color. I don't mm. think we need the maple color. And I, I don't mind the reflection of the highlights of the LED light or whatever it was that lit it, except for the front facing most lights in the lower right corner of the puddle of maple syrup right like that row there's like a two rows of led lights or reflections there i just think those i just think those need to go away yeah the rest yeah, of the reflection I agree. I yeah or even if those those two rows of of lights were an artificial contiguous line of highlight there just so that we had the data yeah, you know, so we know that it's shiny right there, but but those lines are contiguous instead of dotted because the, the dotted ones are distracting. It makes me want to look closer to see what's making those dots when right. taking away from the overall image. You know, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say something that's probably, you know, heresy, but I would consider making this black and white and selectively coloring <laughs> the syrup. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I did not hear that. <laughs> I mean, come on. That would be so interesting on a shot like this. If you used Capture One to target just those browns and reds in the syrup and made everything else just sort of a high contrasty black and white and then brought that back. Maybe even just a hint of color in it so that your brain starts thinking, what kind of liquid is that? If it's brown, you know what it is. You know, it's either cough syrup or syrup. But if it's, you know, you don't because you can't see the viscosity of it for the most part. So you don't know it's thick. It could be it could not be as thick. So I don't know. I'd play with it. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know what? I, I just thought you're of not this. sold. You're not sold. <laughs> not sold. I'm changing the subject. Um, I, you know, Greg has that has that that table shot of, you know, the heart. And uh, he did it. I think he did it for like Valentine's Day or something. Um, this this image, if the if that liquid was red on the spoon, would be a nice companion image to that image. Yeah, yeah. Right? He knows, I mean, I, yeah. the community has probably seen it, and Craig knows what I'm talking about. I think yeah. that would be a companion image, but we're getting off the subject of this image. Okay, all right. So you're not, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna try to edit this for Craig and make it black and white with selective color on the liquid. No, no, selective. <laughs> was out in the 80s and it should stay out so were ripped jeans but come on have you seen her have you looked around lately well the peasant is wearing them <laughs> and where they're ripped right daisy dukes okay all right we can go 
Oh, yeah, we're so easily distracted. Easily, yeah. It's that cro magnon mind of ours. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, chatting for an hour before we record and getting our brains going and... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's so fun, so much fun. It is. All right. It is. N- next up is Lamb. Lamb says three o'clock tea time. My entry for the current photo critique one nineteen theme spoons. Uh, this it is, is three o'clock. This yeah. is one. This is one twenty. Right. This is one twenty. Yeah. Yeah. This is one twenty. Um, the photo was taken Sunday morning when I noticed the bright sun striking into my lounge floor. Immediately, I made this made the sunflower and spoons arrangement and captured some images before the bright sunlight faded. True enough, it faded minutes later. He shot this with his D3. Let's take a look. Nice. And, nice. I, I love see, the that's fact cool. That, see, that's a true photographer right there. He's just hanging out, relaxing. Uh, he sees the light and grabs his camera. Boom. <laughs> International. <laughs> I, I, I like the fact that the, uh, the hands of the clock, if you will, are different spoons than the than the numbers and i just think that's i think that's super cool and i love the color Mm -hmm. the bright the bright yellow yeah yeah that's fun that's an interesting play i mean he's intentionally leaning into the the heavy vignette which leads into the spoons which leads into the print um or if is that real that's not real it's a print of a sunflower right uh yeah flower not a flower no or a paper yeah or something yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Even the, you know, the, you know, for him looking at the shot years later, he'll even he'll know exactly where in the room this was positioned, <laughs> why that tile is on the floor like that. You know, this is this is all that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think it's I think it's really cool. And the colors work great with this because of that yellow sunflower um, and the bright sunlight. So, yeah, very creative. Yeah. My brain wants to see a stop action sort of animation of this being built with the spoons just sort of popping in yeah, there one that's... after another. <laughs> that's how my brain sees stuff. <laughs> and then once it's built, the hands of the clock start spinning, you know? <laughs> oh, you could use a fork, like, for a second hand. That would have been good. Like a... Like a yes. Like a, okay. What is it? Those little forks you use when you have, like, crab legs and stuff when you could go to restaurants? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Totally. Yeah, when we could like go to restaurants. <laughs> that sounds so. That sounds so Mad Max. <laughs> that's just that's just for archival purposes. So you know, in, yeah. in some years, somebody be like, "What? What do you think, uh-huh. mean?" You remember the days when you could just turn a knob in the kitchen and clean water would come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could yeah. take a Very- bath at least once a week. <laughs> uh- <laughs> <laughs> all right our next last next and last photo of this critique is from michael deray oh, michael okay. says man with headphones uh shot with his micro four thirds em10 with a sigma uh 30 mil at f2856 Ooh, processed in affinity and krita i don't even know what Cre- do you know what krita is don't i don't know what that i know what it is it is a free and open source raster graphics editor designed primarily for digital painting and 2d animation it features an (laughs) open gl auxiliary canvas (laughs) okay now i know and now everyone knows that i use grammarly and it is amazing if you don't use grammarly you are like running uh with ankle weights on it's really good i use grammarly and it doesn't do that Yours doesn't do. You have the paid version. Yes. Why doesn't oh. it do that? I must not have it configured for that browser. Okay. Maybe you I'm... don't have the plugin in the, in the browser or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I use that all the time, and it is it has improved my my English skills, writing, uh, even speaking uh, a lot over the past year. Nice. Uh, and he says, oh, and a bunch of spoons. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, a bunch of spoons were lost in the making of that particular <laughs> image. This is that. really cool. This is really cool. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Very creative use. I like, you know, this is, uh, this would also work for our next um, topic, right? Our composite or mix of images. You know, he drew in the beard and the, and the hair and that's true. Yeah. Angry. <clears throat> I love. I love that. Wow. Yeah. 
That is yep. cool. That draws you right in. Yeah, that's a, that's a piece of art. What do you think? So concept, we both agree, pretty pretty awesome. Um, execution, what do you think? I think it's solid. I think it's. I think he's conveying the exact story that he wants to convey. It's. He's not trying to convey more than what's here. And I like the, um, the the casualness of you know the drawing and and you know the the play of the spoons and yeah, I think it's. I think it's great. I want to hear this guy talk. <laughs> I want to know what his yeah, voice. Is. <laughs> oh, you know what he sounds like. You know, he's a, it's got a. He's got kind of a leprechaun look about him. So. <laughs> 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 he does now, doesn't he? <laughs> right, right. He does. So I don't know. I'm guessing he may be Irish. I don't know. That's perfect. Very cool shot. All right. Well, it's at that time again. We have to make a decision on who our fa- oops hit the wrong button. Who our favorite child is? <laughs> which uh, which which are you leaning towards? I think we do. We I, do. You still feel the same way you felt at the beginning of the show? I I do. I do. I really like James. I really like the the James Glennie Spoon creation. I think there's a lot yeah. of favorites in there. As we always say, it's hard to pick. Um, but that one, I think, for me, it it has it has a good leading lines. The use of lighting is really nice. Um, the form and shape, like we get what it is. It's abstract. It's simple. Yeah. 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 I, I, I agree. <clears throat> I agree. I really like it, too. So that is this week's favorite. Winner, winner. James Glennie. Chicken dinner. Winner. And winner. ironically, ironically, with that red beard, if James had same color hair on top, he'd look like uh, Michael DeRay shot a little bit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Michael Teresa? Yeah. Look at that right there. Come on. Come on. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little uh, inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Cool. All right. So we, you already called it. So next week's topic is going to be combining imagery, combining images together, yeah. um, whether it be in camera, multiple exposures, or some other technique within the camera or uh, in post-production somehow. Um, and Troy, you said it could be mixed media, right? It doesn't have to be photograph on photograph. Yeah. It could yeah. be 3D composited into a photograph or like like Michael DeRay did, you know, painting on existing elements or something like that. So have fun with it, right? Yeah, yeah, something fun. Yeah, very creative. Yeah, very creative topic. So, yep. Yeah, cool. Forward. All right, that's next week. We'll call it combining imagery. Um, any final thoughts before we close this one off? Did you ever make a formal announcement on F64 or anything? Did you want to do that or is that uh, still hidden? It, it's not hidden. Um, we are postponing and uh, we're pushing off from September, which is going to be September 12th and 13th into February. The reason I haven't made an official announcement yet or have that data updated on the on the uh, website is we don't have a date in February yet uh, because they do a... Well, they normally in down in downtown Santa Ana, the art district, they do a photo walk. They do an art walk and it can be a huge crowd and we can't be there during that walk. So we're trying to find out from the city and stuff. So, yeah, we're definitely bumping it into February for the physical part of it. But uh, you could you could mention the digital part of it that we're talking about doing the the twip side of it. The twip side of the F64 event or the big summit before the F64 event? Yes. Yeah, there's a All lot. Of that. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's more a lot back there than, than that. Yeah, so there's going to be some digital stuff coming as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, we'll do a big reveal and, and talk about it all. It's pretty, it's pretty dang inciting and exciting. And it um, okay. represents kind of an a evolutionary path for a lot of the stuff we're both doing on the TWIP side and F64 and uh, considering the, the sort of zeitgeist of where the world is right now um, with regard to travel, stay at home or stay in place orders, um, decline of traditional sort of gigantic booth and session trade shows and a bunch of other things are folding into it. But I'll go into we'll go into much more detail and kind of a formal presentation reveal shortly. But that's a that's a teaser on it. So get ready. Yep. It's gonna it's gonna be a big deal. And uh, you know we'll tease you. I'll tease you with this. It won't. It's photography. 
obviously, because that's our that's our DNA. Uh, but there will also be other things at the virtual event, like comedians. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> music, music, uh, you know, music acts, stuff like that. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. And the, the interesting thing about it is because this is the first one um, that, that I'm sort of pulling together and producing, it's not going to be one of those, you know, everyone's welcome 100 percent, but there'll be limited. There'll be a limited number of slots available. So it'll it'll more than likely get into a scarcity sort of thing where, you know, some people will be mad because they, <laughs> they couldn't come. So, you know, um, you know, Troy and I, Troy, we talked about it and sort of those max capacity numbers and why. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about all that on the launch. Yep. Yeah. We'll have to do like a radio recording or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. OK, man, I think that's it. So remember for number or critique number 121, it is combining imagery. And this week's winner was winner or favorite was James Glennie. Yeah. All right, guys. See you tomorrow or see you next week, right? Well, yep. I'll see you sometime this week. We're always on Zoom. So. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right, folks. We'll, we'll see you in the next critique. Peace. This is Twitter.